Here's your host, Alex Garrett. Well, one of the major aspects of Alex Garrett Podcasting is the adapting chapter, the adapting feature. And I've got a very cool uh, interview coming up because I've got an opportunity for those who actually have a disability and are finding a bit of tough time heading into the media. Well, we've got a company I want to talk about. With Media is actually a company for and created by those in the disabled community. And I've got a longtime friend who's now the vice president of content development at With Media, Sam Tavares. Man, this is an honor. Thanks for joining me. Hey, likewise, Alex. Thanks for having me on. A little background. We both went to the Henry Viscardi School. I think you graduated a couple of years, a few years after me, but we've stayed in touch all the time and actually seen each other at the stadium quite a few times. But uh, now we're talking about something a little more serious than baseball, because what you guys are doing at With Media is pretty special. I want you to tell us what's going on with this new company. Sure. So With Media is a company created of, by, and for people with disabilities and everyone else. Um, this is an idea that was created by our founder, Howard Rensland, back in the 70s. Um, he has a daughter with developmental disabilities. And, you know, when she got older and when she graduated high school, you know, when he and his wife were thinking about, man, what is Victoria going to do after she graduates? They thought, is she going to go to college? Is she going to go to a day program? Or can we somehow find her a job? And the funny thing about that is that Howard is an actor. He's a member of sag Astra. So he thought of the idea, well, why can't we get Victoria a job in the film and television industry? And, you know, it's the 70s. You know, typically you, don't, you never saw people with disabilities in movies or in television. You rarely see them nowadays. So that's really where the idea from Mr. Rensland uh, began. It was through his experience with his daughter Victoria and his experience as an actor. But with media, is basically a media company for people with disabilities and everyone else. We create content that revolves the the same community. We talk about news that impacts the same community. And we also talk about people, non-disabled as well as disabled, who are looking to continue opening the doors for people with disabilities. Well, you know, I want to give people a little bit of a background because if you are a Viscardi alum, I just want you to know that these opportunities started for Sam really at Viscardi, right? Because you were doing the production there and you've been part of that team for quite a while. Maybe give us a little bit of an update on that experience, too. Sure. So I began my career in media as an intern at the Viscardi Center while I was a student at the Henry Viscardi School. Um, the Viscardi Center and the Henry Viscardi School, for those who don't know, are in the same building. Um, so during my last year of high school, um, Mr. Kemp, who is the president and CEO of the Viscardi Center, approached me and asked me if I was interested in doing an internship there. Because uh, the year prior to that, um, my class produced a video that was sent up to Albany. And Mr. Kemp was very impressed by it. It was originally a class assignment. Um, Funny thing is I was the only one who finished the project. So the project became mine. And um, Mr. Kemp liked it. He asked me if I wanted to do an internship. And I did. I did it for the entirety of my last year there. And, well, the rest is history, as they say. Right. And so, uh, and by the way, shout out to Ed Brunette, who kind of took you under his wing, didn't he? Yeah, Ed was great. I mean, I couldn't have, I couldn't have asked for, you know, a better mentor, a better teacher during that time than Ed. I mean, Ed is, Ed is passionate about this industry like I am. And it's always, I always say it's great to learn from people that are as passionate as you are, because you learn some amazing things. And here I am at with media you know, applying all the things that Ed taught me while I was an intern here. So, you know, it's great. He's a great person, and I'm very, very thankful to have the opportunity to work with him. Still do to this day. Sure, sure. Now, you know, and I know, that we all want to get into, like, the WFA ends of the world or those kind of big sports media outlets, but is it a little more special to break into something like with media, knowing that that's an opportunity for fellow people in the community? Absolutely. I mean, listen, I'm going to be honest with you. When I first joined with media, you know, I never knew that there was a very high number of people with disabilities looking to work in the media industry. You know, Mr. Renfland, you know, that was one of the things that he shared with me when I interviewed for the job. Well, originally with, with media, I started as a producer and then they promoted me. Um, 
it's only, you know, less than 5% of people with disabilities work in media. And I'm like, wow, that's crazy. And um, Wait, wait, say that side like, again, because I was going to ask you that, actually. Yeah. So when Mr. Rensland interviewed me for my job, one of the things that he mentioned was, well, Sam, you know that less than 5% of people with disabilities work in media. I was like, wow, that's crazy. And, you know, when I got the job, I started my first week at Wikimedia. Media. You know, one of the first things Mr. Rensland asked me to do was do some recruiting, see who else you can bring on board who is interested in working with media, who has a passion for media. And I was absolutely stunned at the amount of people that I interviewed for positions at Wikimedia Media that had either gone to college, technical school, or who have experience in television who are looking for an opportunity to work in this industry. Um, something that with media is very, very, you know, dedicated to is having a workforce where 28% of our employees are people with disabilities. Well, right now I'm happy to announce that we're about 70% of people with disabilities working in, working at with media. So, you know, changing that, the tide for sure, Sam. Absolutely, man. You know, and, and, and I'm going to tell you something. I'm, I'm lucky to work with the people I work with. I mean, the, the people who I get to, you know, collaborate with every single day who have produced these amazing stories that, you know, have aired on the disability perspective, you know, it, it, the people we work with are phenomenal. And, you know, I think that if you were to meet these people, which 70% of them are disabled, you would be, you know, so happy at what you see. Because really, people with disabilities, Alex, as you know, are very special people. And not just because we're disabled, but because we offer something that I don't think any other group of individuals bring. Well, let's have a... No, and, and, and I want to hit on this because I just realized as we're talking, it is ADA month. So to be changing the tide, and we'll get to the disability perspective in a minute, but be changing the tide in the very month that the ADA was created, how does that feel? It feels great. And what's awesome about it is that we're getting positive feedback from people. I mean, our first show that we released on YouTube last month got 270 views. Our Facebook page now has about 4,000 likes, which is phenomenal. And recently we produced a piece for, as you know, Disability Pride Month, which absolutely exploded on all our social channels. So, yeah, it's, it's appropriate. You know, we're celebrating you know, what is the 32nd, 33rd year of the ADA and the fact that we have with media a channel for people with disabilities, you know, you couldn't, uh, you couldn't have painted a better picture or written a better script. Well, right, because you guys just launched. So, I mean, you're launching in a very crucial time. I mean, I don't know if they're doing this year because of COVID, but normally they have the Disability Pride Parade down down Fifth Avenue. I mean, there's a lot of activities that maybe the able-bodied community, community isn't aware of that we can talk about, Right. Right, right. That's absolutely right. So, and um, I'm sorry, go ahead. Well, do you think that the launch was just perfect timing, knowing that this is ADA month? Well, I have to be honest with you. I don't think that we launched with the purpose of releasing for the ADA month. I think it just happened that way. I mean, you have to you have to realize something. With media, as I said before, was an idea that was created over 30 years ago, almost 40 years ago. So, you know, with media has been something in the works for a very, very long time. I think that if you watch one of our interviews with Mr. Rensland, you know, he really dives deeper into the origins of the company. You know, when he first came up with the idea, he went to companies like ABC. He went to companies like Disney. He went to so many other television stations and companies trying to get this program, this company up and running. And it just didn't happen until, you know, he decided – well, let's try with young people. Let's see some people out of college, how they do. And um, the project started back in February. We released episode one in June, and we just released episode two yesterday. So, By the way, yeah, it, how many hours of happened. work are you doing on this? Because I've been reading your numbers. You're like working hours on end, and that, that's why I want people to know about this, because you're working so hard at it, Sam. Oh, man. Alex, I'm working every day, man, even on the weekend. You know, it's... It's making sure that our producers have what they need to put their stories together, making sure that our editors, you know, edit these stories the best they possibly can. And also it's talking to potential partners. It's talking to, you know, these companies that have an interest to 
promoting uh, to the disability market and making sure that we can have them on board with us. So I can tell you what, man, I haven't gotten too much sleep since joining with media, but it's, uh, it's for a good cause. Well, I know that it, it, from what it sounds like, and I, maybe I'm wrong, but do you guys hope to streamline maybe even people that were that are at with media into the mainstream media world, like an ABC, then NBC? Is there is there a possibility of that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, with media, we're not just a media company. We're looking to train people, people with disabilities, as well as people with non disabilities. You know, we want to train them in the media industry, whether it's learning how to be a production assistant whether it's learning how to be a grip, whether it's learning how to be a camera operator or an editor, et cetera, et cetera. You know, we hope to train these individuals, have these individuals either work for us or take those skills that they have learned into the mainstream media, like a CBS, like a ABC, like a PIX11, et cetera. So we're, we're much, much more than just a media company. We're trying to, you know, train people to, to work in this industry because, like I said before, there are a lot of people with disabilities who are aiming to work in this industry, but just need a little help getting there. Well, yeah, I mean, it, it's under 12%, but we can definitely raise that number, can we not? Oh, absolutely. And like I said, all you have to do is interview people like I did. I mean, I'll give you an example. We have uh, a worker here, a great guy named Drew Deves, okay? He graduated from the University of Florida. In journalism, he did internships for PBS. He was the main anchor for his campus's news station. And Drew Dees is a very, very talented person. I mean, if you met him, you would probably say that he's the Dan Rather of news for the people with disabilities. We have another great girl named Katie who does social media with us. You know, if you were to meet these people, you would see that there's a world far beyond, you know, what we're currently seeing is, you know, able-bodied people in front of camera, in front of cameras, you know, giving the news. You know, there's a whole, whole world out there of people with disabilities who want to do the same thing. So, absolutely, we can definitely succeed that number. Sam, talking about talent on the air, we have to talk about Jason Benetti for a minute, right? I mean, he has CP, but he does ESPN, he does the White Sox. I mean, he's really broken in. And doesn't that give everybody some hope that, yes, this community is being recognized a little more day by day? Absolutely. And that's what we all want is recognition. We want to be accepted into society. And that's been, unfortunately, a a great difficulty for this community. But I'm hopeful that as time goes on, you know, people will start recognizing our talents and will start, you know, using our abilities, not just using us because they feel bad for us. Because unfortunately there, Alex, as you know, there are a lot of people who give us opportunities, not because they feel that we deserve it, but because they feel bad for us. You know, we want to we wanna continue showing people that we can do the things that normal people do, or able-bodied people, excuse me, can do, but differently. By the so, way, I... Uh, a great example. I 100% agree. I mean, sometimes you read the community news, oh, they hired this person. It's like, okay, but did they hire it to be in the community newspaper or because they actually wanted to? You get a little sp- skeptical, I think. Yeah, and, you know, unfortunately, as you know, a lot of companies, not just in media, but in general, you know, they are they have a very, very big reluctance to hire someone with a disability. Something I, I find very disturbing about applying for a job is, and I don't know if you feel the same way, but when you apply for a job, one of the questions they ask you is, are you disabled, yes or no? Mm-hmm. And sometimes I felt this way, at least. When you say yes, it's kind of like you're telling them, no, don't hire me because I'm disabled. And that's something that we really need to change, you know. It's, it's not just the media, but just in general. People with disabilities need to be hired more. People with disabilities are a great asset to whatever, to whatever industry they aspire to be in. And, you know, like I said, we're slowly changing those numbers in a positive direction, but we still have a lot of work to do. You know, you just mentioned the word training a few minutes ago. That's exactly what our founder, Dr. Henry Viscardi, did. I mean, when, he, you know, when World War II was done, he had the center made for those who were injured, coming back from the war, disabled, to train. And, and so I got to ask, when you're in all these and you're hearing the stories, do you ever feel the spirit of Dr. Viscardi while you're working on these projects? Alex, said it again. You kind of cut off at the end. Well, do you ever feel the spirit of Dr. Henry Viscardi, the founder of the Viscardi Center, Viscardi School? Oh, absolutely. And 
I think working at this media has a Viscardi type feel to it. I mean, I was there for 14 years. That's all I knew in terms of, you know, general education, education. You know, I never went to, I never went to a school where, you know, it was, I was the only disabled student and everybody else wasn't. Working at with media definitely has that feel. And obviously, I don't think any of us will ever endure what Dr. Viscardi went through when he created abilities, which is not a but you definitely feel the similarities. You understand that both organizations are important. Obviously, with Dr. Viscardi, it was opening uh, a facility that employed people with disabilities, which later eventually turned into a school for disabled children. And that with media, it's kind of similar to what abilities did, but except it's media. So, yes, you, you kind of feel do you, you kind of do feel the same way Dr. Viscardi did when he created abilities now, the Viscardi Center. Your founder clearly knew Victoria had a lot of talent and was shocked that she couldn't find something. But I've, I've got to say now, with all the other talent you've mentioned, let's hit on encouraging those with disabilities to be out in front of the camera. I feel like there's a reluctance to that, too, and, and we got to get people out of their shells. Well, Alex, as my, as my boss, Mr. Rinsworth, would say, you know, and obviously it, you can't compare the two, but they're similar in each way. Telling someone you're disabled, it's kind of like coming out of the closet, so to speak. You don't know what the reception is going to be. You don't know how people are going to take it. And in terms of the reluctance part, that's part of it. You know, there are a lot of people who are afraid to admit. I mean, listen, even if, even if they aren't on a wheelchair, they can walk. Let's say they have a bad hand, but they can only use one of their hands. Or maybe they can't use their hands at all, but they can walk, but they only type with their toes. You know, admitting that to people, especially people who you don't know, is difficult because you don't know how they're going to react to that. So I think that something we have to work on is building confidence within these people, within these individuals, and making sure that they can go out to society and be like, hey, I'm disabled and I'm proud of it. You know, mm -hmm. and then I do this and this and this and this, this type of way, and this is who I am. You know, there's, there's no shame in being disabled, Alex. You know this. Right. Unfortunately, we're in a society that doesn't see it that way. Not everybody, but you know, most of the people don't see it that way. And like I said, you know, definitely uh, a lot of work still left to do. Sam, I, I feel like with media could inspire people because I, I maybe you disagree. I don't know, but I feel like everybody's adapting to something every day, right? Like there's literally someone having to adapt to something right now, and with media could probably be an inspiration for these folks that maybe have never been an amputee before or never have been in a wheelchair, but now they have to adjust. I mean, there's that angle too. I mean, listen, I was going over our Instagram page yesterday, and we released a story about public transportation, particularly the MTA, which, you know, is not so great for people with disabilities. Um, and we got a comment from someone who was thanking us for addressing this issue. And I read that, and my heart melted, because I actually, for the first time ever, realized, man, we actually impacted someone's life because of the story. Imagine, imagine all the future stories that we do. How many people are being affected because of the COVID-19 vaccine distribution, right? How many people are being affected because if they have, you know, X amount of dollars in their bank account, they're afraid that they'll lose their Medicaid. Mm. You know, how many people are being affected by things right now that really haven't had their voices amplified? So, Absolutely, Alex. This is going to be a success. I, I know it's going to be a success, and it's going to inspire a lot of people, and it already has. Trust me, it already has. Well, we'll get to the Instagram in a minute, but give us a, a, a sort of a speed watch or speed read, however you want to do it, on the last two episodes. What have you guys covered, and where can people find them? Sure. So on episode two of Disability Perspective, we covered the COVID-19 discrimination policies in Connecticut. Um, the governor of Connecticut had originally made a plan in which people with disabilities and immune compromised individuals were going to be priority for the COVID-19 vaccine. But about two weeks before the distribution began, he changed his mind and decided to, decided to base it off of age. So people with disabilities went from first to last. And there's mm. still a very, very high number of people with disabilities in Connecticut that have not been vaccinated with the COVID-19 shot. We also cover a story on the Gaylord Gauntlet, 
which is a fundraising event for a hospital in Connecticut. It benefits people who have been disabled due to trauma or who are born disabled. It's kind of like a marathon. So we cover a story on that. We also cover a story on the Paralympics, para-athletes and the discrimination they face. Um, Haley Zionek, who's one of our producers and one of our editors, did a fantastic job on that piece. And lastly, we, uh, we cover a story about a young girl who played wheelchair basketball for the Ryan Martin Foundation. Um, this episode is 22 minutes long, and it's available on the With Media YouTube channel. On the With Media YouTube channel. Very cool. By the way, para-athletes do not mess around. I'm sure you know that. Oh, no. Oh, man. Alex, you and I both know that. We were, uh, we were at a school that had some very fierce competitors, so... Uh, <laughs> We definitely know a little bit about that. Well, let's step aside from that, from the whole with media, because I want I want people to get to know you too, because you've got a personality that is way beyond with media. I mean, you are very passionate about your Yankees. Let's start there. What what's going on? Well, I will tell you what, man, it's it's baseball. I mean, you have uh, you have your good times, you have your bad times, and then you have times in which you really just can't get out of the funk. Um, you know, what's happening with the Yankees is disappointing. Um, no one saw it coming, even though I think I was the only person who did at a spring training. But, um, hey, you finish the first half of the season 46 and uh, 43, your chances of making a postseason are too well. I certainly don't believe they'll make it, but, hey, anything is possible. But uh, I think that once this season is done, people are going to start, you know, making uh, decisions as to whether or not the general manager comes back, whether the manager comes back or whether the players in general just come back because uh, it's been a disappointment. Do you, uh, because I feel like to talk about other things makes sense in the sense of, yes, we are disabled, but it's also important to distinguish that that's not all our story. Am I right on that? Absolutely. Absolutely. That's not all our story. I mean, there are, there are a lot of us who have endured a lot, as you know, Alex, but have come out on top. And I think that's what makes our story special. It's not really the feel-good moments, but mostly the sad moments, what we've been through, and how we use those difficult moments to achieve what we want to achieve and get to where we want to be. You know, how many, how many movies have you seen about real-life people in which they talk about how, oh, this person had a terrible childhood, you know, they were abandoned by their father, or they were adopted and whatnot, and they ended up doing amazing things as adults, and they use that experience to motivate them. I mean... Stories of people with disabilities are not only emotional, but they're they're motivating. Well, we gotta we gotta collab more on this because I feel like you guys have stories that we could share on this podcast too. That would be awesome. Absolutely, man. We're definitely open to uh, more exposure. And uh, hey, man, you do a fantastic work. The network you work for is also great. I know a lot of great people there. And, um, yeah, we'll definitely be open to this opportunity. By the way, yeah, l- let's talk off air about that. By the way, talk about inspiration. Do you know Rudy Rudiger, the man from Notre Dame? Do you know what he had to overcome? He actually overcame learning disabilities. And I don't know if many people know that. But as you just said, there are people like Rudy overcoming these things that maybe not even are seen. Yeah. I mean, listen, you can name a whole lot of people who are disabled, whether it's a learning disability or physical disability, who, like I said before, have overcome their obstacles and have done amazing things, and Rudy is definitely one of them. Now, but alongside Sam Tavares, are there any familiar faces that Viscardiites might recognize that work with, with media right now? At this moment, no. Um, we are definitely open to having HBS alumni working with us, um, but as of right now, I'm the only HBS alum that's there. So hopefully that changes. But, uh, hey, it is what it is, you know? Well, you know, it's good to have those connections because you never know how that grows. And it sounds like you guys are just hungry to grow right now. Oh, man, we definitely are. And, and, like, and I'm going to tell you something, Alex. I know we got to cut off soon, but, you know, this is, this is key to what we're doing. Um, we're a brand-new channel, but we've already partnered with a company. I don't know if you heard of the company called Audio Eyes, but Audio Eyes offers closed captioning and audio description for those who are visually impaired as well as those who have uh, hearing impairment as well. And Rick Boggs, who is the founder and CEO of AudioEyes, is great friends with Howard. And um, AudioEyes partnered with Media, and with Media 
in a very near future is going to be producing commercials for them. So that's just that's, that's amazing. Congratulations way. for that. You. And to add to that, and to add to that, AudioWise provided the captioning for the Oscars that just happened. So that's very very big for us, and we're absolutely proud of it. Well, it clearly, th- this this with media has street cred now. For those, uh, well, if anybody has a story that they want to submit to you guys to be covering, do you guys do that? Do you take outside tips like, hey, I got someone down the street here that I want you to highlight? Like, how does the highlighting for the disabled disability perspective work? Sure. So you can visit our website, with-media.org, and there is a contact feature on the website. You can give us your name your pronouns, if you have any, your email, and uh, you can write us a message. Well, that sounds pretty cool. And and what are the socials, Sam? And what's your social, too? Let people know that. Sure. So you can add me on Instagram at the underscore believer, underscore 28. And you can follow with media on Twitter at with TV. I notice, I notice on your Instagram you're very open, and I feel like that's a part of you that you are just you want to express. So, uh, it, it, from what I've seen, is you've used social media to express yourself, which is so awesome too. Absolutely. I mean, what's the point of having uh, what's the word I'm looking for? What's the word? What's the point of having an outlet if you don't use it? Mm. You know, I know that I know that we're in a day and age where you know we have to be careful of what we say, but at the same time. You know, we have to respect uh, each other's opinions. We have to respect how we feel about certain things. And, you know, even though I try not to open up too much on social media, but it's great because even though people sometimes don't reply to what you say, you get that exposure. You have that outlet to go out and express how you feel. And, you know, I try my best to do it. And I do notice you have a crush, and I don't know what's going on with that, but I hope she comes through for you, man. (laughs) Hey man, I hope so too. It's been a while, but I hope so too. It just and and dating is a big part of this. Maybe the disability perspective could cover that because I mean we're still, especially now at a pandemic. Maybe you're hearing stories like, yeah, it's a tough scene right now because we're still getting out of it. I mean, for the disabled community to overcome the pandemic is an ex- is a success. Now we all want to get back out there, right? Absolutely. Listen, is there something that with media loves is interabled relationships relationships between people who aren't disabled and people who are disabled. Now, I'm not saying that a relationship between two disabled people isn't great because it is, but you have to admit that there is something very, very unique, something very beautiful about either, excuse me, either a woman falling in love with a man in a wheelchair or uh, a man that's not disabled falling in love with a woman who is disabled. And we, we're certainly fans of that. We're certainly going to be, exploring that realm even more. Um, all that I say about that is stay tuned because we're going to be creating some good stuff in regards to that. Well, that sounds cool. Maybe it'll be a matchmaking service too. It sounds like with media wants to be a lot of different things, which is always fun to hear the ideas and, and keep us posted as they come along. Absolutely, man. And uh, like I said, I appreciate you, you know, talking to me today. It's great to be with you on this show. And uh, yeah, guys, check us out on YouTube. Check us out uh, with media.org. And I would say get with with media right now. Follow them on on the socials and um, follow Sam as well. And always a pleasure, man. We talk a lot, and, and to do this finally, it means a lot to me also. Yeah, likewise, Alex. I appreciate uh, I appreciate you. I think you're awesome. You know, we worked together during the basketball tournament. Yes, the we did. Yep. And uh, you know, you and I go back a very very long time, but it's great to be with you and. Uh, Good luck on the rest of your podcast, man. I hope uh, I hope you do great. All right, one more sports thing. I cannot let you go without asking this because I'm you're a sports guy. I'm a sports guy. Otani starting and hitting and in the home run derby. Is this guy's arm going to be okay after all is said and done in Colorado? No, no not at all. And I was talking to my father earlier today, and I told him I said he's he's uh, pitching tomorrow and he's leading off and he's doing a home run derby tonight. And he's like, man, that guy that guy's going to have a dead arm by the time he's done. I mean, listen, that's unfortunately, excuse me, unfortunately, that's the cost of entertainment nowadays. You know, listen, baseball players have a lot of stress on their bodies. And uh, I don't know what the Angels were thinking, letting Otani do the home run derby and now letting him pitch and hit 
in the All-Star game tomorrow. But, hey, that's why they get paid a much higher salary than we do, right? And he could win, but it's just going to be tough to watch him after the break, I have a feeling. But we'll see. I pray for him and hope that things go well tonight. But I had to get your perspective because he's the name of the league right now, is he not? Oh, absolutely. It's just a shame that he's not in a, in a much bigger market like New York or L.A. I mean, he's in Anaheim, but come on, Anaheim isn't L.A. And um, and by I the way, with media, I hope does cover adaptive sports because that's a big thing, too. Yeah, we are. Like I said, we cover uh, the para-athletes, uh, the Gaylord Gauntlet, and um, we also did a piece on Hennessy Hernandez, who, as I stated before, uh, she was a member of the Ryan Martin Foundation. Uh, Ryan Martin right. is a young man with uh, spina bifida who, kind of like Joe Salonica at Discardi, started his own wheelchair basketball program. Very cool. Well, we got to catch up on all that on the disability perspective. Sam Tavares, thanks again for joining, and we will talk to you very soon. I've got a feeling. Thank you, Alex. Same here, man. I hope I hope you stay well. I'm Alex Garrett. If you need some inspo to adapt, Go to With Media and here at Alex Garrett Podcasting, we are always adapting. Talk to you soon. This was so good.